Hey guys, um, thought I was about due for another vid. Well, this one's going to be a lot more lighthearted than the other ones I've done, which were a lot more serious and political in nature and such. Um, I actually put up this vid up earlier, but for some strange reason, YouTube seems to have swallowed it, so I'm going to try it again. Um, this one's going to be, I guess, more related to my name. I'm pretty sure some of you guys might have been wondering, you know, what's he doing with a name called Sword Sage if he's not bothering to talk about swords at all? Well, today we're going to remedy that. We're going to talk about swords, specifically some of mine. I'm just going to take the time to share at least one of my loves with you and just talk about three particular blades I own. I've owned more, but I've lost some of them and some others aren't really worth showing, so I'm just going to show three particular ones. By the way, you might notice this white thing over here. That's the mic I'm using. Even though I got the headphones on, for some strange reason the mic in here is kind of messed up and I might have to rewire it or something. But my lovely wife has decided to loan me hers, so I'm just going to use hers for now until I can get my hands on another one or fix this one. So, let me hurry up and get into it so I don't um, lose my 10 minute limit here. Um, I've stated before that I practice Chinese martial arts and sword play is a big part of it, at least with me. I happen to love the Chinese sword, the straight blade actually. Not the curved one, but more the straight ones that you might have seen in films like Crossing Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Um, I like swords of all types though, rapiers, Japanese katana, long swords, you name it. But it's the Chinese ones that I'm really interested in. Um, Hurry, let me hurry up and get into it. Um, like I said, we got um, three that I'm going to show, and I got them right behind me. That's what the sword rack is for. They're normally hanging on there, but got them behind me now, so it's easier for me to show. First one I'm going to show off is actually not a top-of-the-line one. Normally, I like getting swords that I can practice with that are, you know, top quality. This one I picked up for 30 bucks online, so right off the bat, they should tell you that it's not exactly the best sword you can get your hands on. As a rule of thumb, if the sword is less than $100, it's usually a piece of crap. There have been exceptions to that rule, but that's a good rule of thumb to follow for the most part. I picked this one up mostly for its aesthetic value, really. Um, I happen to like the whole slimline katana look. And I've seen this so many times, and it was cheap, so I figured, why not? I mean, I'm not going to practice with it anyway, since it's not part of my style. But it looks nice. You know, you can see the whole little thin feature. And a little dragon carved in the side and the brass fittings are decent enough. But one thing I was surprised with after I got my hands on this weapon was that the steel involved is actually not bad at all. Normally things like these are made out of crappy stainless steel which is a no-no if you're going to be getting combat swords. But this one I think is actually um, high carbon steel. I've seen a number of sites actually say it was. It's not tempered beautifully enough but if you had put a decent edge on this thing, you might be able to have it as a decent backyard chop or, you know, cutting up bushes and things like that. And the balance is not too bad. It's a bit blade heavy, but not as horrible as some other swords I've seen. Of course, it's got a fake hormone on there, but, I mean, hey, can't have everything. It's a $30 sword, you know? Many people consider this to be a stick katana. I consider this more of a Tang Dynasty design. Um, not too many people realize this, but um, Tang Dynasty swords have this shape. Um, at least one sword maker I know of is making a sword similar to this with the exact same blade. Well, except for the fact that it doesn't have a fake kimono on it and it has an extremely sharp edge. But yeah, Tang Dynasty swords, a few of them were made like this. So if you're willing to spend the scratch on that, you can get yourself a sword that looks kind of like this, but with a better blade. Or you can go my route and just get this $30 one. It's not bad, especially if you wield it with two hands. But now let's get into my, um, you know, the jewels in my collection. At least I think they're jewels. This one I picked up off a website for about 90 bucks. It usually retails for 109, especially the later versions of this. I picked this one up. Um, this is like generally a first generation one. Some of you guys may recognize it as the practical Tai Chi sword that Hanwei sells. And for those of you who don't know, Hanwei is a subsidiary of um, Cass Iberia, a sword making company. Um, Hanwei's got a decent reputation among um, people who collect katana, but they make really good Chinese style swords too. And this was the first one I picked up for them and I was really happy with the quality. Normally people who are in the Chinese martial arts know that when it comes to weapon selection, Chinese swords generally suck. You usually got a lot of so-called Wang Chuan type swords which are cheap knockoffs to the real thing and they're usually made of crappy steel and all that. And like loose brass fittings and all types of garbage, but this is a good sword. Um, by the way, the rope around it, I'm, happen I'm working on some knot work right now for a better grip. 
Unfortunately, the first generations of these didn't have that great a grip. It was a little bit too slippery. So after a while of practicing it, the sweat would get in the way and it would be hard to grip the sword. So I started doing some Chinese style knot work along the end. And when it's done, I might show it off again just to show you guys what it looks like. Um, the blade is high carbon spring steel. It's got some flex to it, as you can see here. But that's actually common with a sword of this type. Um, it actually has an edge, too. I thought this wouldn't come with an edge, but it did. It's a serviceable edge. It will cut. It's not like top of the line sword um, edges that I've seen, especially in Chinese swords like this. Contrary to popular belief, Chinese swords, well-made Chinese swords like this, could have the same cutting devastation of a katana. But you got to go to a good sword maker for that. This is not the same quality, but it's still got one hell of an edge to it. And I'm pretty sure with a decent polish and sharpening, it can really be devastating. As for now, it will cut if I swing it. And that's good enough for me, but I practice with it. Um, the flex is good for cuts, and um, it's a decent um, thrusting sword as well. Um, you might notice that even though it flexes, it's not completely whippy like some of that wushu crap that you may have seen. I know that many wushu competitions, you see guys using swords that look like they're made out of some type of like tinfoil type of variety, but Chinese swords are not supposed to bend like that. Um, but other than that, this is a really good sword. I especially like the elegant design of it. The sheath, if you notice, is really thin. A lot of Chinese swords don't have a scabbard this thin, but this does, so it has a very elegant profile. And I also like the fact that these brass fittings are silvered. If this is brass, I'm, I'm thinking it might actually be steel, but it most likely is brass. And it's a well-made sword, a good you know, wooden handle, wooden sheath, with um, the brass fittings and coverings. And the whole white sword hanger part also just adds a nice touch. Okay, now we're going to this one. This one's another Hanwei sword, and this is part of their Adam Xu Kung Fu weapons line. Adam Xu is a well-renowned Kung Fu master. Um, anyone who knows about him and knows his work knows that he's come up with some really good scholarly um, works. And here goes my wife. <laughs> um, his, <laughs> she's saying hello. Um, anyway, he's done a lot of really interesting scholarly works. Some of them are considered controversial by some, but they're really good things to write if you're in the Chinese, read really, if they're in the Chinese martial arts. And they tend to fly in the face of conventional wisdom. I consider them must-reads for anybody who's interested in Chinese martial arts at all because he dispels a lot of myths. Anyway, I'm talking more about him than the weapon. He was complaining about the lack of really good Chinese weaponry for Kung Fu practitioners. And I mean, he's right about that. Like I said, they usually suck. So he decided to go to Hanwei and commission them to make what he considered to be better practice tools for Chinese martial arts. And he's come up with some decent swords, some good pole arms, and other types. This one is his Kung Fu sword. You'll notice right off the bat a difference between this one and the other one. For one thing, the handle guard in this one is swept against toward the blade. This one's swept toward the hand. He considers that a more traditionally apt view. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> this is a more traditionally apt, um, to, um, he considers this one a more traditionally correct one. I tend to think that both of them are correct from my bit of research. There's not one that's wrong, but who knows. But I do find that this does give for a more defensive type of, there is a technical, uh, ugh, a defensive practicality to having it swept toward the hand because it slides away better. Though with it swept toward the blade, you can lock blades better, but let me not get into that. There's a higher polish on this blade than on the other one. And I also noticed that <laughs> and I also noticed that there's a seal on there. That's Adam Shu's personal seal for on his weapons. There's also a sword spine for better structural um this um, basically gives better durability to the blade. And it's a lot stiffer than the other one, but there's still a flex to it for cutting ability. It doesn't have an edge, but it definitely can be given an edge and it'll still be a devastating weapon in the right hands. Another thing I like, though, is the hilt itself. The handle actually has grooves carved into it. So you have a better grip. You don't got to worry about it slipping off of you. And not only that, but it gives you feedback to where that blade edge is at all times when you're swinging it. And the spine ridge as well, I didn't say this before, but when you're swinging it correctly, it gives an extra whooshing sound when swung. You can get the same sound off of this, but it's easier to do with this one, so it lets you know that you're swinging it correctly. So it's a very good training tool, and it's just kind of cool to impress your friends with it. All in all, I consider this a damn good sword for the money. I picked this one up for about $125. Normally it retails for a bit more than that, but I know where to get my weapons for cheap. Anyway, that's just a really quick little showing of the three swords I like practicing with. Well, that one I just 
play with, really. But these two are the ones I hardcore practice with, and they're damn good swords if you can get your hands on them and you're interested in Chinese sword play or Chinese martial arts in general. So, yeah, just wanted to show off my own weapons, just a little... Just showing off a little bit of a side of myself as to, you know, the whole swords-loving part of me. And I guess my wife also wanted to get part of that so you can see what she looks like. So anyway, I hope that was enjoyable, if slightly silly. And um, any questions you might have about these weapons or why I practice with them or where to get them, just let me know, either through text comments or video comments or whatever, and I'll be glad to answer them for you. Anyway, catch you guys later, hopefully with a much more serious one. Bye.